You're listening to Happy Hour Hustle, a bi-weekly podcast featuring the musings and witty remarks of the one and only Kim Bodie. We can promise at least two terrible jokes out of Kim and at least 10 minutes of incredible thought leadership from some amazing and influential guests. So grab a glass of iced red wine and join us for a wild ride. Here's Kim. Uh, Welcome everyone to another edition of Happy Hour Hustle. Uh, We are going to talk about uh, culture and team morale today and boasting team morale. Who's team? Ghosting? I guess we could boast about it, but that doesn't really make any sense. So we have a special, yeah, I I feel like we can because I think we've been doing a good job with it. Um, In case nobody noticed, we are dealing with the pandemic and that clearly has affected all of us in terms of uh, mental health and and morale and, you know, not actually seeing other humans. Um, So our guest today is actually one of our clients, um, but also is an operations manager. Operations manager or director, Erin? Director. Director. That's a, that's a bigger deal. So you're much much bigger deal. Um, I'm going to let Erin introduce herself and then we'll jump into an icebreaker. So Erin, we tell us who you are, your title, which I already screwed up and then who MediSearch is. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Erin Sacco. I'm the director of operations here at MediSurge. We are a medical device contract manufacturer. We make single-use disposable devices. Um, We're here for kind of any contract manufacturing, design-related help that you need for any type of medical device. We primarily do cardiovascular surgery right now, um, but are expanding across across the board into all sorts of medical device manufacturing. MediSurge is a part of a larger organization called Alliant Enterprises, and we have a sister company that is Alliant Healthcare Products that can sell uh, all sorts of devices into the government, VA, the Department of Defense, et cetera. Um, so yeah, we're, I'm excited to be here today. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, you're like one of my favorite people. Um, okay, so what do you, before we jump in the icebreaker, uh, what's your drink of choice? That's an sure. important that's an important question since this is called happy hour hustle. It is very important. What I would say is I don't discriminate. Um, I would say probably yes. vodka tonic is my go-to, but I'm also a white wine drinker and I uh, don't shy away from a good beer every now and then. So, do you put a lime or lemon in your vodka I do lime. tonics? I'm a lime. Nice. Nice. Now, do you squeeze it in there? I do and I put okay. it in. Ooh, oh. you hear what, what, uh, what kind of germs they have on those things, right? In bars. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, I, yeah it's kind of creepy. Yeah. Yeah. I just, well, I don't think about that, Kim. I feel like the alcohol. <laughs> I'm certain the alcohol. Yep. There you go. The alcohol kills it. <laughs> um, so we always like to ask people this question cause you know, it's just fun, but do you remember how you met me? I don't think I even remember how we met. Um, first time obviously we were already working with MediSurge. Yeah, I think it was in the, the my first business meeting. I came to 834. We met at your little conference r- uh, table outside of your room. Um, Brad was on the phone. I remember um, Rick Kelly and I came, and I think that's how we became friends. Yeah, and then the rest is history. Exactly. And then we went to a very fun show in Anaheim, California for I MD&M. Not, I wasn't with you. You weren't there? No. Oh, that's right. You went the second, went the second year without year. me. Mm-hmm. It's unacceptable. Yes. Okay, so we this is our icebreaker. Do you want to tell us about some weird hobby or something that you did during quarantine or best story you've heard this week? Hmm, that's a tough one. Let's see. Like, did you take up knitting or anything like that? All these um, people that were so productive during quarantine and I was just drinking every night. I Yeah, I read a lot about people doing like making honey and making jam. Right. I was definitely not that cool. No. Um, I would say the only thing I, I got to do during quarantine that's been really cool is I've been able to spend a little bit of time with my niece and she just turned one on September 4th. And so we're, get, we're gonna celebrate her birthday this week, but I've been able to kind of see her go through some pretty big developmental phases uh, during quarantine, so. That's awesome. And that's such a great age. And some of it has been social distancing, which is hard. I mean, early on, you know, I was going to work and they weren't really seeing anybody. So be a lot of outside stuff. And so yeah, it's definitely had its challenges being a first time aunt, you know, trying to work through the social distance stuff, but it's been, um, it's been good to have them. So I'm definitely the fun aunt. When you don't have kids, you are the fun aunt. Yeah, you have to be. Well, and yeah. I'm competing with my sister-in-law has a sister, Kathy, and she's a cool aunt too. So there's two of us. She's got two cool. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to up your game. 
I know. I mean, I'm the one that gets on the trampoline or runs through the sprinkler with them. Granted, that's after I've had like several glasses of wine, but I mean, they don't know that. Someday they'll figure it out, but no. Um, Actually, this this reminds me when you're talking about a one-year-old. Did you, so obviously the wildfires right now are, are ravaging the West Coast. And did you hear that one of the fires started from a gender reveal party. I did hear that. It's insane. What right? the hell? No. Can I just say nobody cares if your kid has a penis or not? Like, yeah. there is no reason that you need to be lighting off fireworks. Like, nobody cares that much. Yeah. Like, literally, let somebody draw the crayon on a piece of paper, and everybody needs right. to be happy for right. you. Right. Or how about a cake? Like, yeah. <laughs> didn't they do cake? Also, I think gender reveals are just pointless Overrated. anyway. Just tell people what you're having. Is it just another reason for you to get a gift from all the people that don't have kids? Because that's what I feel like it is. I have actually, none of my friends have ever done a gender reveal party and they've never, like, even my sister-in-law, nothing. They, they were just like, yeah, we're having a girl. <laughs> like, right. Because, hey, we're having now. a girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't care. I so. think it's weird. And then there's, have you heard of the, have you heard of push presents? I have heard of this. I don't okay. know if my brother got my sister-in-law one or not, but I hope well, he I did. don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but also like it's just a, like okay, so push present for those of you who don't know, you're gonna wish that you didn't know this, but I'm done explaining it. So apparently, your wife pushes the baby out. Granted, that's how they're born, um, or sometimes C-section, but we will get into the details anyway. And apparently, the husband is supposed to buy the wife a push present. Like, I, I don't know I wanna, I what that is. It like a tennis bracelet? Oh. Uh, yeah, like a car. I like, what, what do you get for that? that? Like, right. Like, so not only are we having these gender reveal parties, but we're also doing push presents. And I would just like to say as a not, what do they call you? A dink, double income, no kids yep. individual. Stop with all these stupid parties. Like maybe celebrate the things in life that like a graduation or a master's degree or a new job. Like just all you people that have kids out there, it is a quite an accomplishment. And I would not want to be you right now in this time of COVID, but also stop inviting us to these dumb parties. I did hear though that as people that don't have children, we're supposed to throw parties for opening our own business. So like as equivalent for that or you know, if you have a big life event, like a new job and, and you don't have kids, throw yourself a, hey, I got a new job party and invite all of your friends to that so that you do are able to do those same things. I have read that, that you're supposed to do that. So that's basically like every weekend yeah. I'm throwing a party for something, a party for something important <laughs> in my life. Yeah. Right. I didn't know that it was acceptable now. That's great. I want to hold a party for my dogs. I'll find that um, article and send it to you. Yeah, please do. And I shall share it. Okay. We're getting off track. So we want to talk about um, culture. We want to talk about uh, morale in the time of COVID. And I'm so sick of saying COVID and pandemic, but 2020 sucked. We are where we are. Um, So we really want to talk about ways you can keep your team motivated so they feel supported. Um, Because you know what? Mental health, we're we're all isolated right now. We're maybe seeing each other. Um, Mostly we're, we're doing Zoom, like we're recording this podcast. And you know, it, it it wears on you. And a lot of times you don't even recognize it or realize it. It just, it's almost like a slow creep. So we want to talk a little bit about that because you are, you are big on this and you and I talked a lot actually during COVID on some things that you were doing for the team. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to have you um, chat about boosting morale when the entire world sucks. Um, so do you recommend, and I, I feel like I already know how you're going to answer this, but, um, do you kind of have uh, like anything in place to, to recognize when team morale is low or are you, are you proactive as it relates to that? So I think it's a good question. I think you have to do both. Um, We tried to be as proactive as we could. We recognized right off the bat that we were asking these guys to come in. We were essential from the beginning. They've been essential throughout this. So our crew has been coming in and the best thing that we could do for them was try to keep them as safe as possible. We already work in a clean room environment. So we had a leg up on most industries. We already had the cleaning procedures in place. We have the gowning procedures in place. We already had all of those things. We were able to build off of those though and, you know, add certain uh, additional cleaning practices, um, ways to keep them additionally safe in the cafeteria area, limiting people in certain locations, having them take staggered breaks so that 
um, you know, fewer people were in a, co a concentration, concentrated area. Um, so I think being proactive from the beginning on that piece of it, but I think more so, so like being prepared as a right. company makes your, your team feel safe. And I think that's super important to morale. If they feel like you are doing everything that you possibly can to keep them safe, they're going to feel better about coming into work every single day. I think in addition to that, we went ahead and took a step to do um, a lunch every week. It's a small gesture. We said, hey, thanks for coming in. Thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. And we did a different local restaurant every week for about three months um, and just said, you know, we know it's hard to be here every single day, but we want you guys to recognize that the management team sees that and we care that you're here every day. We want to make sure you know that. Um, but then I think I outside think of that, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think one of the things I loved about that too, is that you're also supporting these other small businesses, especially restaurants and bars in the community that were hit exceptionally hard and still are struggling and, and a lot of them won't survive. So I think it was really cool that, and, and a lot of it was kind of on your side of town too. You did like West side stuff. And, and yep. so like the very, very local businesses. And I think that also sent a message to staff. Yeah, I think so too. A lot of them would even put in some requests for, hey, we want, you know, Maggie's this time, or we want, you know, certain <laughs> different ones. Um, because I think they did like the fact that we were trying all different types of local restaurants and supporting those. And um, I think they felt like that was important too. They know that we're a small business and that if people aren't supporting us, we could be in that same boat as other yep. local businesses that don't have that same support. So I agree with that. I think that also <laughs> played a big role in it. Did you feel too that they were grateful to be able to, uh, quite frankly, have the job and be able to come, you know, be able to be working through this time as a lot of, you know, a lot of people weren't? Absolutely. We heard so many, you know, thanks for being open, um, you know, definitely tons of comments about, hey, we're just happy to be at work every day. You know, so-and-so, my, my sister, my spouse has lost their job and it's been really hard. Um, so I think throughout this, everybody has been really thankful to actually be part of the essential workforce. So, so in times that are not maybe COVID related, although <laughs> will we ever escape it? Um, what are some other ways that, you know, that other, what are some other suggestions on how you can make sure that your team um, feels heard and motivated? Yeah, sure. So there's, I mean, you can really do anything. There's a lot of different ways to do this. And I've seen that the more that you can you know, just be interactive with them, the more that they'll appreciate that. So even last summer, we were doing barbecues every month, um, same kind of thing, just to say, hey, you know, we're supportive, we're here, we think you guys are doing a great job, continue to do a great job, we appreciate it. And we'd have, you know, everybody across the management team come in, our CEO come in, um, we even had uh, our CEO bake breakfast for the operators and just to show his appreciation for that kind of thing. So just small gestures. It's not very expensive. It costs you a couple hundred bucks and it goes mm -hmm. a long way with those guys. Um, I think in addition to that, recognition is a big one for, yes. for our team. So yeah. you know, we have a couple different programs for that. One, I would say um, our quality and regulatory team does a great job with this. They recognize that in med device, having good quality is super important. And we do a, a program called Quality Heroes. And our quality and regulatory vice president, Kelly, will hand out uh, $10 gift cards that recognizes, you know, whoever had a great catch in quality or has had a really good focus on quality. Um, and I think it's really important just to recognize those people. And they love the recognition and they love the $10 gift card. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Um, I think you just have to take the time to do it. I think you guys have done a great job too. I, I know when we were doing a couple of videos, um, marketing videos, it, you even made sure that, you know, the operators and, and those in the clean room were, were being interviewed and were being, um, you know, were, were, were being recognized throughout like the process of what they do. And, in, and you could see the pride, like you could see the pride that they have for the company. And so that in itself speaks for the fact that you're, you're clearly, your employees feel heard and they do feel recognized. And that's like, that sets you up prior to, you know, a pandemic, you know, making sure that, you know, that, that you'll be able to, to maintain or, or at least like, you know, boost or, you know, hopefully boost employee morale throughout like whatever the hell's happening right now. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. I think you, it's important to do it even in times not like this, but if you don't do it, um, you know, when you do get into times like this, it seems 
too late or whatever the right word is. And a lot of companies have seen turnover and that kind of thing during yeah. this time. And I think we're, we've been really lucky, you know, our crew has been really strong throughout this and um, it's been amazing to see just the character that, that our team has come through with. And I think throughout it, um, recognizing that is important to them because they just, they just want to come to work and do a good job. And if, if they don't feel that support, then I think that makes it tough. But if they feel that oh, they're ready 100%. to be here. So. We do. Um, so we do team outings sometimes too. Um, and I usually try and make people go to a bar, but sometimes I'm forced to do other things. So, um, but I just make sure there might be booze there for me. Uh, no, but like we've done things like, gosh, uh, what are some of the things we did? Oh, we did, we painted wood signs, which this is, that's such a girly thing for me. I was like, this is terrible, but it actually was quite fun. Um, we did, we went to Chicago for, um, like our team retreat. We mm -hmm. called our state of the company and we went to a comedy show. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, we, we do things like that. And, and I think like, I, I think that the team really appreciates being able to kind of get together and to bond, you know, obviously it's a, it's a work focused event, but we, we're also a super small team. Um, and so all of us are kind of pushed together. I mean, it, it I always, I always say that 834 seems more like a family, you know, or, or kind of acts or functions a little bit like a family. And I do think that, I do think that is true. And I think that is because we are a small team and like, quite frankly, a lot of the employees are friends and hang out outside of work. So, um, it's just kind of acknowledging that within the culture and understanding that you kind of have to integrate that in. Um, and I think we've, we've had a lot of fun doing, you know, different things. Um, you know, I know we're, we're looking at a volunteer opportunities once we get out of COVID, obviously that's not happening right now. And something obviously with dogs always, that's of course. dogs, but of course. Now, do you guys do like outings and activities like that? You, I know you do a barbecue in the summer. Yep. I think, I think it's important to do those things. Like you said, it's people getting out of work and unplugging and being able to be together. And I think, like you said, you're a small business, we're a small business. It's important that people can feel that connection because um, we think of it the same way as a family. And so, yeah, I mean, there's really a multiple, like multiple things you can do. I mean, we've done a golf outing with you. That was very fun. You know, we've done a few things like that, I think. For us, a lot of it is like going out to lunch. I mean, we'll go out yep. to lunch as a staff together quite a bit, almost every day and talk about work. Don't talk about work. It's kind of really a, whatever everybody's feeling that at that time. And so I agree that outside of, outside of work items are very important. Um, I would say in my previous lifetime, um, we did a women's networking event and uh, we had been doing them about every month. And I will say that the activities that we did in that, even though it was just a lunch for an hour and we would do either a craft or we'd have a Ted talk or we would talk about a book that we read. It was really important for, um, we were a little bit larger company for the women to kind of connect on that yep. level. And it doesn't matter what the activity is. I mean, there was yeah. one day where we like, I don't even, we did some craft. I can't even remember what it was. Wasn't the point. We were grouped with people that we didn't always work with. And we had great yep. conversation, got to know people that we didn't really sit with or work with on a daily basis. And it worked. I mean, so the activity to me is a secondary point to the yep. time that you're going to spend with those coworkers and get to know them. So. It's like forced togetherness. Yeah. I mean, we've done things forced like family play fun. It's forced family fun. We've done things like play cards against humanity. What the meme, which I never even knew was a thing. Um, what's like the heads up game. I really like that one because, yeah, you know, one. people just look so dumb when they're trying to like do, you know, and then yeah. we also do uh, honorary titles. Uh, oh. Yeah. Like everybody always bends down when they're doing that. It's like, you don't have to do that. Just a device. But it's like, nope, I'm going to, my entire head's going down to play this game. Yeah. Um, heads up. Maybe I, it doesn't matter. Okay. But we've done things like our creative lead is, is very chipper and very like, just like, I don't, I say that like, that's a bad thing. I was like, and she is very chipper. Like it's so irritating. So we gave her the honorary title of literal fucking unicorn. Um, oh wait, literal fucking rainbow. Sorry. I have to say they have found um, twice in that, but I mean, we, we have fun with it. Um, you know, and like, you know, it, it, I think a big part of it is not taking ourselves too seriously um, because what we do can be very stressful sometimes. And to know that um, 
that we can have fun while doing it. I think that's, that's a big thing. And that's a big part of our culture too, is, you know, we joke around, we're sarcastic. And I see that in you guys' this culture too, you know, like mm-hmm. obviously you're creating devices that are saving people's lives, but you're also like, I don't want to say having fun while doing it, but you, you really are like, you mm-hmm. like to come into work and you create an environment where people actually enjoy coming into work. I totally agree with that. And I think having a sense of humor on top of, you know, especially during a time like this, it's the only way that you can get through. So having good friends at work is super important and making sure that, you know, nobody's taking anything too serious and right. you're able to, you know, just joke around and have a good time is important. And I think that's important across all levels. So not just support staff or not just the production team. I think it's important for them to feel comfortable to come to you and say, Hey, I, you know, whatever. And I have had, you know, my production supervisor, she texts me every day, but she'll send me funny memes and stuff. Just, Hey, yep. I was thinking about this today. And you know, it reminded me of you or whatever. So I think it's, I think that is really important. I think, especially during a time like now, you know, you have to be able to joke. You have to be able to laugh. I mean, yep. this time that we live in is so crazy that how, I mean, if you don't have that, I don't, I mean, I don't know how you're surviving. So. Right. Well, and I would say too, like, you know, obviously you guys have been functioning throughout this because you're a central business. Um, and I think some of the ways that we tried to, um, you know, stay connected as a team, obviously, because we, we were, we were working from home. Um, and we did like, you know, zoom, we did zoom games, um, Um, we did zoom at happy hours as a team. I was terrible at it. Um, we did like, you know, we would have, we had a lot of, like, I feel like I talked more to the the staff when we were working from home than I, than I did half the time we were in the office and I felt even more connected. And I think that's one of the reasons we were able to, um, I don't know, like we were able to sustain and, and, and really, really keep ourselves all motivated. Um, but I think it's also recognizing that, you know, mental health is something that you should be able to talk about at work. It should be something that is not, you know, there's not a stigma attached to it. And we are very open and honest about it. We've had podcasts about it. We've, we've written blogs about it. Like we live in a world right now where you're like, a, you know, your senses are, are overwhelmed with everything that's going on in the digital world and all of that. And you, you're never disconnecting. And so, we do make it a point to really, to make mental health a a focus and to say, if you need a mental health day, take a mental health day. That's okay. You know? So I I do think that that's an important conversation that, that people have, especially in this time, you know, and whether you have an HR, you know, person who can have those discussions or whether it's like, you know, making it so your, your, your staff or your employees feel comfortable coming to like their, you know, their manager. Or yeah, yeah, sure. No, I totally agree. And I think it also is important to understand where people are coming from. One of the other pieces during this that we've encouraged our team to do is be open and honest. I mean, it is stressful. School, people going back to school, child care, spouses that have lost their jobs, spouses that need to go to work and you don't have child care. So what do you do? I mean, it, there's just so many different unique scenarios that this has caused that the best thing for us as a, as a team has been hey, come to me with whatever is going on in your life and we will figure it out. And we've had, yep. not to disclose anybody's certain situation, but we have had, everybody's situation has been different and we've been able to work through each one of those privately and specifically for their needs. And I think as as organizations, you have to do that. I mean, there's no yep. way you can survive something like this without understanding what somebody's going through and how where their stress level is depending on something, you know, just the simplest childcare. I mean, there was a, a situation, you know, where schools all got shut down on, it was like right. a Thursday afternoon. They were supposed to shut down on Monday. Nobody had school Friday and they never went back. I mean, yep. and so you just have to, as, as companies, you have to be willing to work with your team on each one of their individual items. And to your point about mental health, if you're having a day, you have to be able to take that day. I mean, and, and as organizations become more comfortable with this discussion, I just think there's going to be more and more opportunities for people to be able to talk about that. And then they're going to be more loyal to your company. They're going to be able to work for you harder, you know, do a better job because they're not afraid to speak up and say, Hey, you know, today's one of those days, you know, I'll see you tomorrow and I'll come back and work twice as hard. So and I will say too, you know, it like you said, it, to your point, it has to be on a case by case basis, and everybody has their own individual story. And I think that's harder for larger companies. I think it's where small businesses kind of excel because I think the employees feel like they can, 
they can be more honest. Plus, we also we make we can make the time to have those conversations. Um, I will say too, and I and I wrote a blog on this in smallbizmusings.com, but just talking a little bit about um, what business owners are going through and the unique challenges we've faced. I mean, we've had to become like uh, you know, EO interpreters, you know, every executive order that comes out, we have to read it. And then we have to try and read between the lines and then figure out what the hell does even, this even mean How for our business? With it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And some of this stuff would come out and go into effect like four hours later. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, I mean, it just felt like you're, you're getting hit from, you know, you're, you're trying to make sure your employees are okay. Are okay. You have to make sure that you're compliant and you're not, you're not, you're following the law. And then on top of that, you're, you're trying to make sure that you're, you're still able to deliver the services or say the product, you know, to your clients, you know? So it, it I will say to, I think it's important that not only just recognizing employees, but recognizing those managers and also looking at those business owners. And I think that there has to be a sense of acknowledgement or even just something as simple as a thank you. Um, Because I think, you know, knowing that, that the decisions you're making or knowing the the things you're doing to hopefully boost morale and stuff within the, um, the company, it's good to be the same thing. It's good to be acknowledged or recognized regardless of what your position is. Um, and you know, I think, I think we feel very isolated and alone sometimes because we're like, who else do I talk to about this? I don't, I don't have another person. And, sure. you know, I can, you know, there's other business owners, but, uh, you know, you're, you, you are, you're, you're constantly navigating things that, you know, who, when I started my business 14 years, uh, 14 years ago, I wasn't going to be like, someday there will be a pandemic and I'll get to deal with that. How fun. And I'll have <laughs> like, to navigate how, you know, how I can have people in an office and how I can social yeah. distance and what signage right? I have to have and how can I keep them safe yeah. and what PPE do I have to provide? And right. Yeah. It's, it's definitely and like, difficult. do I have the, the back to work policy written up? So, you know, I'm protected right. and, you know, does, does, does staff feel, you know, does staff feel okay about things? So for, for there wouldn't be a happy hour hustle unless there was dogs barking in the background. So, um, I would say for us, it wasn't so much the back to work. It was, we had to provide, uh, immediately you are essential memo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Agency. Yeah. Here's here's everything that we're taking into consideration. Here's what we're doing, and you're essential. So you get pulled over by a police officer. Right. Show them the here's your letter. That says, "Hey, and call Aaron at home. Thanks." Yeah. <laughs> so, right. And who would have thought you would have to do that? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. luckily, I didn't have any instances of that. But it, I mean, I had to come up with that letter with, within less than 24 hours. I mean, it was like immediately we knew that the state was going to shut down totally agree was the right thing to do but on the on the other end of that you know like you mentioned I would say for us you know our CEO recognizes that we make devices for medical uh, medical devices for cardiac surgery and as somebody who has a mom that has congestive heart failure this hits home with me if we had to stop production there would be potential that there would be a lapse in supply for open heart surgeries and oh yeah during the pandemic the number one underlying condition is cardiovascular issues and so for me it was imperative that we stayed open it was so important that we provided these devices yep. to be able to have those open heart surgeries personally and professionally so well and i think um i think you know not even that, but you're talking, you know, like when, when we were all went to work from home and it was like, okay, now we all have to have policies for working from home. And then, and one of the things we did is we were super flexible. We said, you know, you're not like, cause what you run into is you're not taking breaks. You're not like, you're not, you know, shutting it off. And so we really had to deal with, okay, guys, you need to like give yourself time, go for a walk on your lunch, whatever it needs to happen, but you have got to take that time for yourself. Um, and that was, a, that was a struggle. I mean, you know, I think we all at one point or the other really dealt with like, um, we're overwhelmed and like, this is, it just feels like we can't shut it off. So I will I say too, like now, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's interesting the perspective though, too, because for you guys, it was more about working from home and trying to navigate that from you guys are working 12 hours a day because you don't have, you know, you don't have to take a break and you're not interacting right. with coworkers, you're not doing that stuff. For us, one of the big 
uh, considering factors for having the um, support staff work from home was actually to try to limit the number of people in the office so that the operators had less exposure to people. Yep. And so that was a hard decision because we, and especially myself and some of the other management team, we felt like we were abandoning them because we're like, no, we want to be there. Like it's super important that we show support that we're there. But at the same time, the, the, better decision is to limit the number of interactions with them so yep. that they could have you know more time on the floor and so that for me was hard because you know as a operations manager you're like all right hey i want to be on site i want to do this but it, it was really about making the decision of saying hey you guys got to stay home and yep. some people have homes that don't have a good place to do work yeah. from they have kids they have stuff and so that was really hard for our support staff was to not come into the office even though that was the right decision for yep. the essential workers so i think it's interesting the perspectives i think it's different yeah. for each business um but i i think what it shows is that it's been a challenge for everybody well, and I think like the biggest thing that I think the probably one of the main points that I hope people take away from this podcast is that you, you have to put the employees first, you've got to figure out in times like this, you know, how to how to make them a priority. And you're gonna have, you know, you can't hold like these team outings or big things, anything like like that anymore. But you've got to figure out how to ensure that they feel heard. Um, and they, they know that they're important. And they're also taking care of themselves. Sometimes I feel almost like, you know, you have to, you're a therapist sometimes, you know, and, and I think, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think you have to put yourself in the right mindset to ensure, you know, that they're getting the resources and the care they need. Right. I totally agree. And Can I, I freeze? Am I still here? Just okay. for a second, I think. But no, I think overall, you're right. I think you have to think about what they're going through and you have to try to navigate that with them which is difficult you know and like we said everybody's situation is a little different and you know from a small business perspective we're able to take that on i think from a larger organization they struggle because they say you have to come to work well it's not that simple for everybody you know everybody has a different scenario you can't discriminate and you can't hold somebody accountable to something that somebody else doesn't have but at the same time you need exactly. to be able to understand those nuances and figure out a way to navigate it so yep a hundred percent um all right before we wrap up do you have any one big piece of advice or and then what is one good thing that has happened to you in 2020 so we can end on a positive note <laughs> sure um, I think just stay positive. I mean, put yourself in a situation where your coworkers and you have made a pact. We've done this. We said, Hey, everybody's going through this together. So if you see me getting down or you see me being negative, call me out on it. Say, Hey, Aaron, you know, today you weren't having the best day. What can I do to help you? Um, so I think put that support system in place, both at work and at home, if you can, um, and, and hold each other accountable to that, you know, have jokes, have things that say, Hey, lighten up, you know, today wasn't your day, tomorrow will be better. So I think, yep. and I think most of your coworkers want to be there for you. You know, you come to work, you want to do a good job. If you have a good team, they're going to be there to support you. So I think put that support system in place, whatever it might be. Um, I will say my parents have been key for me on this one, you know, every day on the way home, you know, I call my mom and say, what did you do today? She's like, well, I can't leave the house. So I didn't do anything, you know, but it, <laughs> I'm like, all right, what book did you read? What did you do this day? You yep. know, and so she's been much more positive. And so I would say, just put those, whatever it might be, your situation may be different, you know, whoever it might be. So I think that's important. Um, one good thing that's happened in quarantine, I, I, like I said, I got to hang out with little Miss Samantha, my niece, quite a bit. Um, that's been really fun. Uh, outside of that, I think trying new drinks, maybe. I got, I've got to try Ooh. a few new drinks. So. Are you like making them yourself? Yeah. At I'm home? Trying some okay. Ones. What's one, yeah. what's one that you've yeah. tried that's unique? So I've tried to do a Moscow mule. That one didn't go as well as I <laughs> had expected. Um, I think I just don't like ginger beer maybe. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, outside of that, just some more fruity drinks. We've tried like some raspberry margaritas and a couple of things, but um, mixing it up a little bit. Right. Oh my gosh. I got obsessed with uh, pineapple margaritas. Mm -hmm. I was doing strawberry margaritas, like mm -hmm. to the point that like, I was like, I'm drinking too many of these. There it's, it's, time. it's, it's, time. I'm definitely not going to get scurvy. So my other one of is, the fruit, you know, mimosas trying different juices in it. And oh. I decided that I like grapefruit mimosas. I just don't like anything that has fizz or carbonation. So I don't like, 
yeah, I don't like champagne. So I just have to drink vodka. So I make that sacrifice. Um, all right. Well, I, I will say, Kim, I will say my, that my favorite Kim story, though, is whenever I see ooh. anything about red wine and ice, I have to text it to you. And so far, I think I've only found two, but one was like a little wood plaque that had something about, I put ice in my red wine, like, I don't care what your opinion is or something. And then the other one was a boat that I saw up north, if you remember, and it said it was the light yes. plate or the, the boat name was like red wine and ice. Yeah. And just, See, there's this whole... There's this whole hidden underground of people that are doing this. I really should start a Facebook, private Facebook group, and I should find my people. I really think that. Granted, they're all probably going to be 80 years old, but I don't care. Listen, they have boats. So <laughs> yeah, you can borrow Yeah, clearly their boats. they're well established. <laughs> they probably have plenty of ice. That's what exactly. I always struggle with. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right. So before we wrap up, I do want to say one thing. This is a hard time for everybody find your person, check in on each other, um, send a text. I have become the master of sending handwritten notes. I mean, it'll be like, Hey, just checking in. So the point that I was like, I don't even have anything to say anymore. Cause it's not like anything's happening, but I'll just send a quote or I'll just say, Hey, I'm thinking of you. I'm here, whatever. Like I don't always have I always, I don't always think to like send a text or stuff like that, but I definitely make a point to send, you know, like I'll send handwritten notes and you know, I'll, whatever it is, like something. So other people know that they're, that you're thinking of them and that they're not alone. Um, cause I think the, like, I hate unprecedented. I hate that as as much as I hate the word pivot, but for fuck's sake, they really do. They really capture what we're dealing with right now. So, but, but all right. Well, you are the best. Uh, thank you for me. joining. And thank you always, as, anytime. Seriously, you could hang out anytime. Um, especially if you're going to keep talking about red wine with there ice. No. Okay. So um, and that's been another episode of Happy Hour Hustle, I guess. You know, thank you. You've officially been hustled, Erin. How does it feel? <laughs> feels great. I'm ready to do it again. <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the download. 